Welcome back and let's continue with the same file from where we left off. So till now we have discussed the volume speed attributes of the ammeter type volume and we have also worked with the volume ammeter attributes with the volume shape as a cube. Now let's change the volume shape from cube to the cylinder and you notice now we don't have the excess to away from center attribute because this attribute works with the cube and the spare. In spare and cube we have away from center whereas in cylinder, cone and torus we have away from axis. Alright. So let's focus with the volume shape as a cylinder and let's play the timeline and you can see that more or less the behavior is the same but let's do one thing let's study the attribute first that is away from axis let's disable the other attributes and now if I play the timeline you can see these particles are now moving away from the overall shape of this volume that is a cylinder and these particles are moving away from the central line of the axis let's do one thing let's scale this a bit more so that it would be much easier for us to visualize and now let's play the timeline alright so you can imagine we have a central line running from the you know central axis of this volume and particles are moving away from that now let's do one thing let's rescale everything put it back to the one and let's increase this a bit more from the y-axis fine and now rotate this I just wanted to create a simple effect of spark emission alright so let's increase the away from axis value to the 3 and this will increase the overall velocity of particles alright now play the timeline now particles are moving pretty fast but if you see from this particular axis you can see the particles are forming again a kind of a line if I just you know shrink the overall size of the emitter you can see now particles are creating a kind of a line or you know some kind of a very noticeable and unrealistic pattern so how are we going to fix this well it also you know depends upon the type of the shot in some situation this can be very useful but as if for now we want to get rid of this you know straight kind of a pattern so we can use the random directions alright so with this the particles are now moving randomly alright now let's do one thing let's enable the gravity so under the end particle shape node we have the dynamic properties let's use this options ignore solver gravity and we can also use the ground plane so we want the particles to you know collide with the base of the ground let's add some bounciness to that also and particles once they're going to hit the ground they're going to collide and they're going to bounce now let's play the timeline pretty good and now you can notice the particles are also you know, bouncing a little bit and let's change the overall type of the particles well first change the overall rate the rate is very very high so under the particle emitter node we have the rate particle per second this is really very really high value so let's change this to maximum 30 alright and now if I play the timeline you can notice the particles have significantly you know, reduced in their quantity now select the particles and change the overall sh render type of the particles from point inside the shading from point to the streak the overall size will increase automatically based upon the values of the velocities so if we have higher velocities the overall length of the particle will increase let's do one thing let's get rid of this tail fading by using the tail fade attribute over here and increase this to 1 so with this we have no more fading from the tail side we can also manually increase the overall tail size by using this attribute which is the tail size so if I increase the size you can see the tail size is now increasing but let's do one thing let's leave the values of the tail size based upon the velocity values and let's do one thing inside the ammeter node let's increase the away from axis value to fairly very high value and now you can see if I just pause the timeline you can notice there is a significant change inside the overall length of the tail size of this particles alright now let's get back to the value of 5 maximum and play the timeline now pretty nice so it seems to like the particles are getting emitted from this point and they are you know 
creating a kind of a spark animations. But there is one another problem and as you know these particles the particle type point as well as the streak these all are the hardware render particles and they will not going to support you know things like the textures or shading maps or you can say the the volume shaders of the Maya so how do we going to incorporate the the textures or shading map inside the particles if you wanted to change the overall shading of the particles well that can be possible if we change the overall type of the particles from the hardware render particles to the software render particles so right here we have the software render particles and if I open this you know drop down we have the particle ranges from multi point till streak and all these particles are basically hardware render particles we have only three particles listed over here which supports the software rendering if I change the type to the tube you can see first of all the there's a very big and gigantic particles are you know forming in our scene so we'll get rid of this not a problem but there's very interesting attribute over here that is s by w then it simply means it's software you know it supports software rendering okay so let's do one thing let's get rid of the the big size of the particles while playing around with the value of radius 0 and radius 1 and radius 0 means the start the start length of the particles and radius 1 is the ending of the particles so let's change the value of radius 0 to let's say 0 0.025 and the bottom length that is 0 0.025 all right so with this now we are back again with the streak mode and the good thing is these particles are software render okay now if we wanted to render the particle type point then what we need to do we simply need to get rid of the tail size so if I take the value from 1 to the 0 you can notice now the particles are again as a type point so we can use both these type of the particles we can use the streak we can use the point based upon the value of tail size and rest everything will going to remain the same as you can see once these particles are hitting the ground they are losing their velocities and now they are getting back to their point mode because now the tail size won't be able to help them since these are totally dependent upon the velocity so the overall length of the particle is still going to be velocity dependent but if in case you dip this value to the zero now in this case the point will remain there from the start till the end all right so this is really very important so that was just a very basic effect in creating the effect of a spark and I hope you have understood this concept so let's take a pause from this clip let's end this clip over here and we'll begin with the new one and I like to explore the another emitter type that is the surface